Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. I am Kid Cadet, and thank you so much for joining in to PC Casey TV. That has a really good ring to it. At this time, I am so honored to welcome the owner of Planet uh, Comic Con from Kansas City. He is the one and only Chris Jackson. Hello, everyone. Hello, Kid. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, fans, for joining us tonight out there and in the uh, virtual world. Well, so. thank you so much for having me, Chris. This is. So exciting. When you texted me asking me to help you host this Q&A tonight, I was fangirling and I'm going to try to keep my composure, Chris. Excellent. I'll give you I'll give you a chance to get a lot of questions in there. Awesome. So let's have our guests join us. We're very excited tonight to be spending an hour with the actor who brings you Alice from, T, from CW's Batwoman. We are now joined by Rachel Scarston. Let's welcome Rachel. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Thank you for joining us. Oh my gosh, my absolute pleasure. I'm so happy to be here. So this is, this is really cool, Rachel. Thank you so much for, for being here, like Chris just said. And the comments are already overflowing. There is people joining us from all over the world. There's people from Kansas City, and I think someone's in here from London saying it's like one in the morning. So uh yeah, you got some global fans, girl. That's very sweet. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> So, well, so Rachel, uh, we're going to start out here. We're going to talk a little bit about your career. And we found a clip of you, we think, from early on in your career. This may be the first filmed work you did. Is that is that if it, it is a honeycomb a commercial? Film, then, yes, it is. <laughs> it was my first foray into television and film. <laughs> I think we'd like your fans to see that commercial, if that's okay. I'd like to see that commercial, so please. Excellent. We'll roll that. Roll that. Someday you'll be taking a spelling test, a real no brainer, when suddenly people there'll be no stopping it. Ooh, honeycomb. Me want honeycomb. Honeycomb's sweet and crunchy. Toasted honey. 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 Toasted honey. Honeycomb. 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 Yeah. Honeycomb. Post honeycomb cereal is part of this nutritious breakfast. Where will you be when the crazy? <laughs> oh my gosh! I'd never. Oh, look, it's my, it, oh, oh, look, you guys are live. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Alex. <laughs> oh, <my>. <laughs> <laughs> Serves them right for coming in when I told them not to. Uh -oh. um, okay, so, so there we go. Um, so, Rachel, was this, it was a while back. Your first acting job, was it difficult getting your eyes to do that in your first production? Is it? It, it was. It was. It took a lot of practice. Um, I can't do it anymore. It's one of those talents you only have as a child. But um, no, it's funny because I uh, I have never eaten honeycomb cereal after that. I couldn't even look at it. I ate so much of it that day. And I remember... It actually exactly where I was when the commercial came on television. I was in my bedroom. I was getting ready to go to school. And I used to watch uh, at this little TV VCR, you know, when they had like the combo um, in my bedroom. And I was watching Saved by the Bell, like a rerun. And the commercial came up. And I remember just being like, oh, I'm a movie star. <laughs> Uh, and that was so much fun. And it was actually the first thing I ever auditioned for. I, I really think if I hadn't 
booked that commercial, I, I'm not sure I would have continued in acting because I, I just kind of fell into it. And, you know, I did that audition. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but then I got it and I kind of got the bug. It's so funny. I remember that commercial vividly. What? And Yes, I remember <laughs> vividly. Like I remember the nose, and I remember the eyes. Like it is seared into my brain, Rachel. Like forever and ever. And I'm all about the nostalgia. So getting to watch that right now was so cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, to, to like look back and remember that experience of your of your first big thing. Well, it's funny watching that commercial because I I'm, I remember thinking that guy was was really cute, you know. <laughs> and I was just now watching it, and I'm like, I wonder what happened to that guy. I wonder where that guy is. <laughs> so if you're watching, let me know what you're up to. Um, but no, it was it was such a surreal experience. I, I think they paid me, you know, three thousand dollars. And when you're twelve, that it's like I thought I was. Puff Daddy, you know, like I was just making it rain all over grade four or whatever grade you're in. <laughs> five, nine, seven. Um, and yeah, it, I mean, I, I went to a special school for the arts, but I was there for painting and music. And so I knew a lot of kids who were actors and it wasn't so far out of the realm. Uh, you know, I was familiar with that, but I yeah, I just uh, I didn't know what it was like to be on set. I didn't know any of the lingo. I was just so kind of out of my depth, but it was it was so fascinating to me and so fun. And uh, they paid me and I was in it for the money when I was 12. <laughs> so do you think it was the money or was there like a specific part of that that made you say, you know what, I think I wanna pursue this? No, I, I mean, I didn't see that money when I was 12. My mom was <laughs> wonderful and put it in a bank account, but it, it was, you know, I, I'm not sure if other people feel this way, but sometimes I, I feel that I'm having a million thoughts a minute, you know, and you kind of have scatterbrain. And there were very few things in my life where I ever felt that I just sort of was completely and entirely focused in on one moment and very present in a moment. And one of those things for me was playing hockey. Um, but before that, it was acting. And I, I loved that, you know, when they yelled action, it was like nothing else existed except what I was doing in that one moment. Um, and it was just such a, a peaceful feeling, which I, I think is sort of um, counterintuitive to most people because they think about like acting in front of, you know, a crew of 100 people and it, it gives them a lot of anxiety. But for me, it's the opposite. It's this thing kind of incredible, peaceful place to be in. And I, I still feel that way to this day. I still love when they yell action because everything else just fades into the background and and I'm just fully and entirely in the moment that I'm in. So you just mentioned hockey and I wanted to ask about your love of the sport. <laughs> yeah, so it started, I was a real girly girl when I was little. And I uh, danced ballet with the Royal Academy. I was like very into ballet. Um, and I remember one night I, I was home with my brother and he asked me to watch a hockey game with him. And he was a, you know, a big hockey fan at the time. I was playing hockey. We grew up in Canada. So, you know, it, it's the law to play hockey. And, um, I watched the game with him. I didn't really want to, but there was something about the goalie that just fascinated me, the way that they moved and, um, and so the next night at dinner, I said to my mom, I, I was like, I have an announcement to make. I'm a hockey goalie. And my mom, bless her, because she's so supportive of every crazy idea I have. But she just burst out laughing because it was ridiculous. Like, I didn't know how to skate. I didn't have any equipment. Um, and, but I think the fact that she laughed made me, <laughs> made me be like, screw you. Now I'm really going to be a goalie. <laughs> and and I used to take myself to like the free skates at the, you know, the neighborhood rink. And I was, would teach myself how to skate. And, and I got really into it. And I kind of by accident got on this rep team because they were desperate and they didn't have a goalie. Um, and we actually ended up winning the Toronto City Championship that year. <laughs> it was a fairy tale hockey story. Um, and I, I played for a really long time and I, I loved it. I still love the game. I actually, whenever the Oilers come to California, because I love the Oilers. Uh, I go see them when they're playing like the, you know, the Kings or the Ducks. Okay. So the Oilers are your team. The Oilers are my team because when, so that same summer that I decided I wanted to be a goalie, my family's from Norway and we went to visit my family and on the plane ride back, uh, these were the days where you could go up and, and meet the captain. 
And my brother and I didn't much care about meeting the captain, but my mom loved going up and meeting the captain. So she'd always like pimp us out to, you know, go meet the captain. And so I remember thinking like, this is ridiculous. I'm too old for this. I'm 14. Like, I'm so embarrassed. And we go up and we're talking to the captain and he says, oh, you're Canadian. Are you guys hockey fans? Like we have the two hockey players. And it was Matt Sundin, who at the time was the captain of the Maple Leafs and Tommy Salo, who was the goalie for the Edmonton Oilers. Anyway, Tommy Salo was the nicest man ever. And he told me, I remember he leaned down and he looked at me and he said, you're going to be an amazing goaltender. And that was it. I was like a Tommy Salo devotee to this day. And even when he was shamed in the Olympics, I was still his fan. But most Oiler fans, when I say, you know, the reason that I became an Oiler fan, they're, you know, it's very anticlimactic for them. But uh, yes, that is why. So growing up, and I think you briefly mentioned the Ducks, which is getting my mind going, like, did you ever watch any of the Mighty Ducks movies? And I, you know, because my dad was Norwegian and my mom had grown up in India, I didn't have the same, like, they, they didn't know the pop culture at the time. And they were big bookworms. And we had a TV and, you know, it, it was, we could watch it if we wanted to, but we didn't really watch a lot of TV or movies. The first movie I ever saw in theaters was Jurassic Park. Uh, and I think I was 10. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't really see those movies. I saw them in retrospect uh, and watched them, you know, when I was getting into hockey, but I, I didn't grow up with them. Well, we have some people in the comments asking if you still get to skate anymore. <laughs> I do actually. It's very sweet. When I first met Adelaide Kane, um, so all, I have different kinds of skates that I'm used to skating on because the goalie skates are flat. They don't have the rocker on them. Oh. Uh, and so I guess I'd mentioned something about not having skated for a while. I don't even remember this, but for Valentine's Day when I was doing rain, um, Adelaide Kane gave me a pair of skates and she had gotten herself a pair of skates. And I said, how did you even know I played hard? I mean, we must've known each other for a couple of months at this point. And she said, well, I overheard and I, you saying you miss skating. Um, so I thought that was very sweet in the beginning of our friendship, but yeah, all my stuff is still here. I still have all my equipment. Um, it's at my mom's, but I haven't, I haven't been on the ice in a while. It's not really something people do that much of in LA. I mean, now that they've won the cup, people are more into it, but it was so shocking to me when I first moved to LA and like hockey wasn't on the front page of the newspaper because here it always is. So. And you mentioned you also grew up dancing as well. I did. I danced ballet. Um, and actually, we at school, we did a lot of different kinds of dance, uh, you know, from jazz to national dance to tap. But ballet was was my love. And I started that when I was very little. Um, I didn't quite have the body for ballet, the feet for ballet. I didn't have the beautiful arches, but I loved it. And, and ballet, I think, taught me discipline, um, grace. It taught me uh so many, so many things. Um, also gave me good posture. <laughs> so thank you, ballet. I'm also realizing it's like getting a little dark in here. So I'm just going to take you while I try and turn on the light. One sec here. We're going oh, on an we adventure. Go. All right. That's brighter. Okay. <laughs> We're going on an adventure. <laughs> That's better lighting. There you go. Yeah. There, there we go. go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So do you, um, feel, anyway. do, you, do you feel that you get to use um, your ballet ability and let's even say your hockey ability in any of your roles that you've played? Well, I will say hockey saved me. Uh, and I, I really mean that genuinely because I was in this industry as a young woman um, and it can be tough, you know, there's so many expectations on, on your physical appearance. And, and even though that's starting to change now, it, it still exists. Um, and, you know, there's there's a lot of competition, uh, people sort of vying for the same part. And so you might be friends with an actress, but you're going in for the same thing. And, and that can be a little bit weird. Um, and hockey was sort of the opposite of all of that. I mean, you you had to be competitive, but it was, it was about working with a team and and a group of women having a common goal. And, uh, you know, it wasn't about being skinny, it was about being strong. And 
and I I really feel that um, it it helped me to keep a very level head on my shoulders, and I'm I'm so grateful, so grateful to that team and that experience. Um, I have done a couple movies where I danced. I've never done a hockey movie. Not yet. Always time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that's so sweet. Ah, I love that. I can see a comment. Can you guys see that? Yes. Hi, Rachel. My daughter Sarah loves you. I love her too. <laughs> What's her name? I love it. Sorry, I'm I'm geeking out here. Continue. No, geek away. That's what we're here for. <laughs> we put a few questions now and then up on the screen. Yeah. So I love that. <laughs> Okay, I know we're getting to the question that everyone, you know, really wants to know. Um, we want to know about um, the Kermit dance. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh! Now I wait. Now I'm gonna have to go back over here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry about this. Okay, so I actually uh, told you guys this story, but hey, you can listen to it again because <laughs> yeah. it's a great story. So. I don't know when it started. I think it must have been sometime in university when um, my, uh, you know, dancing really came into be what it is today. And I, it's I don't know what happens, but it's like my hands they just go jazzy and like my arms. I'm a real hand arm dancer, you know. And every time I have a beer or any drink or really there doesn't even need to be any alcohol involved at all. It can just, you know, <laughs> be me sober. Um, this happens and I don't know what it is, but every time I'm doing it, I think I look good. And so it started th this thing in university where my friends would take videos of me and then show me the next day and be like, Oh, you were feeling yourself. Yeah. Well, this is what you look like. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm doing that woman. I think I'd maybe known uh, Nicole Kang, who plays Mary on the show. She's brilliant um, for a week or two. And she sends me this video and she says to me, this is you dancing. And so I open up the video and I, she nailed me so hard. <laughs> this is literally my one That's my face too. Yep, that move right there. Oh yeah, there you go. Little hip action, little hip, just a little hip, little hip, left arm. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we, uh, I was doing a panel for this uh, virtual con that I organized with my friend Paul Amos and uh, Cam from the show was lovely enough to come on it. And I forced him to eat an entire bag of chips live on the panel. And of course he brought up the Kermit dancing and then I was dumb enough to do what I just did now and show it to everyone. <laughs> So now um, everybody calls me. I can actually see it in the comments here. Kermit Scarston. That's that's yep. me. You are getting a lot of Kermit love here. <laughs> My screen just filled up with Kermit Scarston. That's going to be following you for a while, Rachel. No question about it. <laughs> All right, wait. It's getting even darker in here. I don't know what's happening. Here. We're seeing you fairly well. So you are okay. Is this? Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's really yeah. good right there. It's like everywhere I go in this. There studio, you go. You're I fine. This is amazing. You're good. So I saw a comment roll a little bit up and they wanted to know who would be better at hockey, Elizabeth or Alice? Well, I mean, Alice is dirty, so probably Alice. <laughs> 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 but she, because she would, you know, I used to do it too. Like you do this thing with your stick where you kind of poke at the back of someone's knee when you're a goalie because it, it makes their leg buckle a little. It doesn't hurt them, but it, because they're wearing pads, but it just like makes them off balance. Um, I feel like that's something Alice would do, you know, because you're just like, I can kind of get away with this, but it's not technically legal. <laughs> Even though I would so definitely really like to see Elizabeth play hockey, like what that would look like. Like, what does she wear? And like, you need to ditch the dress. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. We did have a lot of like outdoor activity episodes on Rain, which I think was a direct result of the fact that all the writers lived in Los Angeles and we were filming in Toronto at the time. You know, and we'd be outside in these like snowball fights, which sounds lovely uh, when you're writing it from sunny Los Angeles, but when you're actually filming it and it's so, it's below freezing and you're getting snowballs in your face for <laughs> 10 hours, <laughs> it's terrible. But we never, we never went into skating, so. Never, not, okay. Well, I also wanted to know, did you have a love for English history or history in general before you got the role in Rain? I did actually, I did my degree in university in English literature. Oh, um, 
Yeah. And, and classical history, which, you know, was not the period of history that I found myself in on rain, but I was so excited when I got rain, I, I remember going out and I bought all of these books on Elizabeth and I thought, and, and also Kate Blanchett's um, portrayal of Elizabeth is still to this day, one of my favorite movies and, and had been before I got the part. So to me, this was like, just so exciting. And I wanted to do such justice to it. And so I bought all these books and I had a conversation with the creator about something else. Um, her name was Lori McCarthy. And uh, I remember telling her, and I was so proud of myself. I thought she was gonna be so proud of me too. And she said to me, well, you might not wanna read the books because not everything we do on the show is like so historically accurate. <laughs> and so all my research was for not, but um, yeah, it was, that was such a wonderful world to dive into. You know, they, the, that show was just so rich with experience, whether it be the people or the sets or the costumes or the challenge of the accents. I would have done that show for a hundred years. I loved it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of people, of course, asking about Alice. And I wanted to know, growing up, did you ever have a favorite fairy tale or a favorite story? Well, because my dad was Norwegian, we heard like lots of, we got like weird Norwegian, like tales of trolls under bridges and stuff. Um, <laughs> I don't think it was like your typical fair. Um, but I really, really loved, this is not a fairy tale, but my favorite movie when I was a little girl was The, the Lion King. I loved that story. I loved that movie. Um, you know, I related to, Simba because his dad passed away and my dad had just passed away and I would sit there and cry and then be like victorious at the end. And so I, I think if I was thinking of a story that or uh, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe was like oh. my favorite book and I've read it, you know, all the sort of the whole series of it probably 12 times. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. And okay, out of curiosity, how do you get into the headspace for playing a role like Alice, or even playing a role like Elizabeth that's so far departed from your actual self? Yeah, um, Elizabeth's challenge was for me the accent because I'd, I'd never done an accent on screen <laughs> on purpose. Um, and that, it, it became second nature. Uh, you know, I could drop into it now, no problem, but at the time uh, it was quite intimidating for me. Um, so it was less about getting in the headspace of Elizabeth herself and more just mastering that accent and making sure that it was natural um, and felt natural uh, because you realize you speak differently in different accents. Um, you know, my fiance is French and when he speaks French and when he speaks English, he has a completely different voice almost. It's, it's really interesting. But with Alice, up until probably episode... 15, I didn't, feel, everyone kept asking me that question. And I was like, either I'm clinically insane <laughs> or I don't know what it is. I, I just have a lot of fun with Alice. But um, when we got, you know, around the more recent episodes with the torture and Alice being confined and, and really through like some horrific things, that was more challenging for me and took more, um, it took more from me to to do it and to sort of stay in that space over the eight to 10 days we were filming that episode. Um, and I, I realized what, to a very small extent, what some of the actors who played characters like the Joker before talk about, that kind of dark space that you land in when you're sitting in that darkness for so long as an actor. And so I was very, I was very grateful for the last episode when it was, it was a little bit lighter. Um, but generally speaking, they're so lovely with me on this show. They really give me carte blanche to just do whatever I want. And, and so much of Alice is, you know, she's doing all these like evil things, but she's a psychopath. So to her, they're all just fun and games. Um, and so I really just get to be like as wacky as I want to be. Honeycomb wacky. With the Unknown wacky. Um, <laughs> do you have any pre-character rituals or any like post-character rituals that you go through when you are playing someone like Alice? 
Alice, uh, yeah, coffee. Honestly, I drink, <laughs> I drink a lot of coffee on set um, because she does take a lot of energy, uh, a different kind of energy than Elizabeth took, or even you know when I played Tamsin on Lost Girl, um, and she was a higher energy character, but. Alice really, uh, she's a very big personality and, and she, I draw from the biggest part of my personality for her. But in, in reality, I'm actually an introvert. So to exist in Alice's energy level all day um, can sometimes be <laughs> quite tiring. Um, but then it was really fun because they sent me to Arkham and all of a sudden I'm working with all these other actors who are also playing crazy people. And, um, uh, you know, they brought so much energy. And so I'm kind of feeding off of them. And, and it was a bit, it was a bit easier. But yeah, I would say my main ritual with Alice is just coffee on hand. All right. And I also wanted to know something when I was doing a little bit of research, and I want to know if this is true or not, that you had an experience meeting Adam West. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. Wow, you are very researched. I'm very impressed. Yes, Adam West. Well, I was a really big Batman fan when I was a little girl. Specifically Adam West Batman. I used to wake up uh early before my family were all night owls and I'd wake up early and watch the reruns of the Adam West Batman and I oh, man, I loved that show and I had my Batman pajamas, my Batmobile and so years later, I was at a Comic Con, and I, you know, we were in the lunch room and we were eating lunch, and my agent says to me, because obviously, like I've told everyone how much I love Adam West, even twenty years later, and my agent says to me, "There's Adam West. He's over at the table beside you. Like, I, I know his agent. Do you want me to introduce him uh, to you?" And I just remember sitting there and I like froze and I was like, "No." No, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Like I, I couldn't compute that he was sitting right over there. And then after a couple of bites, I was like, get your shit together. You are an adult, like go meet Adam West. Don't be a pussy. And um, so I said, okay, fine, let's go meet Adam West. And I blacked out. Like I, I to this day have no idea what I said to him. I have no idea what he said to me. Uh, and then I remember after leaving and I said to my agent Holly, I was like, was I weird? And she was like, no, no. <laughs> I think I was probably so weird, but he was such, he was such a gentleman after when he got up from the table to leave, he uh, put his hand on my shoulder as he passed by. And then he turned to me and he winked and that's it dead. <laughs> I was so, so that made that I don't think I've ever been so nervous or so affected by meeting anyone famous uh, before or after that. That was the best. And like, how cool is it that you exist in the same like universe that he does? That's pretty epic. Yeah, it's so epic. People, anytime people ask me like, what superhero would you be? It's always Batman because of him. Um, and people will be like, but Batman's a man. And I'm like, well, too bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's Chris again. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. So would you say that he is your favorite portrayal of Batman? Maybe a controversial question. Um, yeah, I mean, I loved The Dark Knight. Uh, I love Christian Bale's Batman a lot. Um, but they're all very different, you know, because they all have different directors and different flavors. And, um, but yeah, for sentimental reasons, yeah, it's cheesy. It's so cheesy. <laughs> like looking back on it now, it's like boom, pow. But I, yeah, forever he will be my favorite for sure. And obviously, like, that was a super cool moment for you at a convention. And I was wondering if there is any moments that stand out to you when someone has met you at a convention. Any memorable moments? Oh, yeah. It's it's like a really wonderful and humbling experience, especially for me, because, you know, I'm on a TV show. I wouldn't consider myself to be famous. Um, it, the fact that anyone would take the time, I mean, even to watch this now is like so sweet. <laughs> so there's sometimes surprising to me in the most lovely way. Um, and I've had people, I, I think some of the things that stand out to me the most uh, in a fun way are, you know, people who have gotten my signature tattoo. So I'll, they'll ask me to sign 
uh, their body and then they'll get a tattoo and then they'll come back and it's like tattooed on their body. That's like pretty, you know, epic that's forever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think probably like the sweetest ones are when someone I've had a lot of people who've just sort of been too overwhelmed to say anything. And that's really adorable. I'm like, same bro, Adam West. <laughs> um, or, or really and truly like doing shows like Lost Girl, like Batwoman, um, having people come up and say, oh, you know, because of your show, I came out to my parents. Um, that's really rewarding to be part of something that helps someone be more authentically themselves, you know? So that is a really lovely moment. Um, yeah. yeah, that's incredible. And one of the other things, so Planet Comic Con is known for their cosplay. So if you had the opportunity to cosplay as anybody, who would you be? <laughs> I've actually like kind of done this at a con. You um, have cosplayed at Planet Comic Con. Yeah, I was <laughs> actually at your Comic Con. Yes, you have. Um, uh, was uh, well, I was Chew. I was Chewbacca. Yes. Sure. Um, Chewy, it, that's my that's my go to man. I I have a thing for Chewy. I'd love him. <laughs> so I dressed up as as Chewy. Adelaide we should have tracked down that picture. We should have found that. Yes. Uh, yes, I need to see that. <laughs> I think it's on my Instagram. Hold on, let's see. I'm just going to scroll back <laughs> as, as we speak. Yeah, <laughs> this is casual. You're, you're good. Wait, Rachel, can you do like a Chewbacca impression? <sighs> Oh no, because that's gonna end up all over the internet, just like my internet did. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. What to me. I get lulled into a false sense of security, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's a great idea. It's a great idea to do a. <laughs> you and Emmanuel both came in cosplay, I believe, to the show. So who was Emmanuel? What, what did Emmanuel he? Emmanuel Vosier. Yeah, yeah. What, what did he? Here we go. Yeah, there. Oh. I don't know if you guys can see it. There. there yeah, there she is. And I'm Chewbacca. Here you go. Wait. You're oh full gosh. screen now. So. Oh, okay, right. There we go. There, Kansas City. That's us. Yep. Are you jumping in the air? I can't. Do you look like I you're like chewy big. He's really tall, so I wanted to be. <laughs> it made sense at the time. It's fine. <laughs> A lot of people are saying at the next convention you need to dress like Kermit. So there you go. You did. Uh, you sealed your fate, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> a moment ago, uh, we had a, a comment from Emma Jade on the screen that she's going to cosplay at Alice at the oh, next convention. No, so. I was actually so looking for because Alice <clears throat> is a wonderful, in my opinion, character to cosplay because she sort of has these staples that make her very Alice, but switches it up all the time. So I feel like I always say that Alice reminds me of someone who like had a martini, went to Goodwill and like walked out with like almost an okay outfit you know <laughs> you're here like i get where you're going with this but it's a little off um but you can kind of make it your own but still be alice and i'm really looking forward to seeing some cosplays but i guess it'll have to wait what, what is that like for you rachel to see people you know portraying your characters i mean it it's it's just fun because i go to work every day and dress up as this character and that someone else would like the character enough to, you know, take the time and energy and effort to make a costume and to dress up um, is, is really sweet. And I also just give me a dress up party, I'm there. So uh, it's one of my favorite things about cons, to be honest, is the cosplay. And I mean, some of the cosplay, I have to just say, I have to take a minute to say this, it is phenomenal, like the, the intricacy, the detail, the time, the love that goes into these costumes just blows my mind. I love going to the cosplay competitions um, at cons because they're just phenomenal talent. I mean, some of these people should be costume designing for studios. They're so talented. Um, anyway, that's my two cents on cosplay. <laughs> No, and like the time and effort that they put into these. Yeah, yeah I, I don't even know. First of all, how do you travel with that much stuff? Like I can't even conceptualize how you get it there. Some of it's so delicate too. Like I have no idea how they how they get it there, but it's phenomenal. We're planning one of our Sunday crafter creator streams around packing your cosplay for travel. Oh, really? Because, <laughs> yes, it's, it's actually a, a special skill for cosplayers to be able to pack all that in one suitcase or two suitcases. So <laughs> that's just a small aside, but yeah. 
That's pretty <laughs> awesome. We have a couple of people, Rachel, asking if uh, if Halloween is your favorite holiday. No, Christmas is my favorite holiday. Um, I am crazy for Christmas. I don't know. I just love Christmas so much. I can't. I can't even explain it. But uh, Halloween would would come in a close second. Halloween's great. It's great for kids. It's great for adults. <laughs> it's so much fun. Um, I don't actually have a big sweet tooth, so the candy aspect of it is is not really uh, what I find the most fun. But I do love dressing up. Uh, last year, Alex, my fiance, and I dressed up as each other, and that was really fun. <laughs> I nailed him. I did such a good version of him. He also nailed me, but it looked horrifying as oh, me. No. I actually think I, I like looked good as him. <laughs> he was, it's a good thing he's a guy. He just does not, not an attractive female. Oh, no. Okay, you also mentioned that you liked theme parties. So like, do you have a favorite theme that you like to dress up for? <sighs> no, just all this. I mean, probably Halloween is my favorite. I had a big Halloween party. You know, I, I went really overboard. Like I covered my entire house in cobwebs inside and out. I had music and like I filled like blood bags with, uh, you know, different food, like from water to drink, but like all red. Like I, it took a long time to plan and I, I got like intensely into it. I do get that way with birthdays too. I, I really love people's birthdays. Um, you just make celebrations, it sounds like. Yeah, I think it's wonderful to celebrate, you know, and there's so much in life to celebrate. I'm going to get emo now, but like <laughs> there really is. Even in this time, there are things to celebrate. I had my birthday just recently in quarantine and um, and it was wonderful. It gave, it, you know, I thought I remember back in March, like everyone seeing all these memes of like, you know, March birthdays. And it was like sad people at windows and stuff. And I was like, ah, suckers, like in March, like by April, I'm going to be trucking <laughs> like with my birthday cut to April. I'm like sad girl in window, but, um, but it was great. And, and I, you know, you're kind of sitting still. And so I, I just got to really enjoy everyone calling and FaceTimes and, um, also, I think people felt, you know, they feel bad for you when you have your birthday in quarantine. <laughs> they go the extra mile to make you feel nice. But even that, like just a celebration or the, you know, I bought a tree the other day and I've been celebrating it ever since. <laughs> I know, Chris, this is something we wanted to talk about. I knew Chris wanted to bring this up. Don't lie. I, I, yes. And yes, Rachel, Rachel has a tree in her living room now, which is know. gaining quite the comments on social media. Tell us about your tree, Rachel. So I love the outdoors. I love uh, trees and gardening and squirrels and all of the above. Um, and, but I'm back in Toronto and I'm in a high rise building. And so I have a balcony, but there's, there's no real greenery. And it's driving me crazy that I can't go out with trees. So I found out that this garden store was uh, open for pickup and um, I thought this is fantastic. I'm going to buy a tree. So I <laughs> bought this 10 foot tree. Um, and then, and then Alex uh, says to me, he's like, well, how are you going to get that tree home? And I was <laughs> I'm like, uh, <laughs> so luckily for me, he carried it. Um, otherwise it probably would have taken me three hours to get the tree home. But I brought the tree home and now I have this massive tree in my house and it's fantastic. Um, and I wish it, I wish I was, you know, I could show it to you now. But it's wonderful. I still don't have a name for it. So if anyone wants to. They're saying uh, Kermit, Rachel. Everyone's saying name of Kermit. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, there it is. I think there we have know. Rachel's tree right there. Yeah. It's a beautiful tree. Yes, it's a nice tree. It it's a ficus. It's very ah. now are you Are you prepared to cut the hole in the ceiling when that tree grows a bit? Yeah, this is what everybody keeps asking me. Um, you know what? Luckily, I have quite high ceilings. So the part that it's under right now is a little lower, but I think I have a couple of years till that problem presents itself. I'm just picturing Alex carrying that tree home because I think that visual is enough right there for you. So. He was like, this is just such a good example of our lives. He's like, you have this crazy idea. And then you're like, Alex, can you pull this off? <laughs> so somebody mentioned in the comments about 
butterfly knife skills? Is this is this a thing? Yes. So okay. I another thing that I forgot to bring back from Vancouver uh, were my butterfly knives. Because now I didn't think I needed them, but I, a lot of people have been asking me about it and I sort of wish that I had them. But Alice in the comics, it, her go-to weapon are butterfly knives and she has them in both hands and she flips them open and flips them shut. So in the pilot, they wrote it into the script, which I loved because I think it's really important when you play a comic book character that you honor that character and how it was written in the comics. You know, obviously you want to make it your own, but people have loved these characters, grown up with them, lived with them for years. So I loved that that was in it. Uh, but I, I, I was pretty sure that they thought I couldn't do it. And to be honest, I was pretty sure I couldn't do it either. And so I remember going to the stunt training and the stunt girl shows doing the knives. And I was like, oh boy, I'm toast. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna take a video in slow-mo of her hand doing this. So I can just even tr understand what's going on. So I did that. And then I took it home with me and the knives albeit they were dull metal, but um, I must've practiced it for like 48 hours straight and I got it. I couldn't believe I got it. And now it's like kind of second nature. It's like a little party trick, you know, you just pull out the knives, uh, scare away your guests when you want them to leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is actually always me doing the knives. And I, it, it was like so much fun, but it did take a lot of time. Oh yeah, here you go. Any accidents? Yes, I did have accidents because what happens is when you flip the knife open, the it, it's kind of like a butterfly knife is like the knife here and then there's something that closes it. So when you flip it open, it goes like this and it like has the knife. So the one of the sides, it hits your knuckle. So you have to learn how to like cushion it as you bring it back, which took me a little while to learn. So I, I bruised my knuckles quite a bit actually <laughs> doing it. <laughs> There's a couple uh, Alice potential cosplayers in here saying that they want to get the trainer knife so they can actually use it for the cosplay at a convention. So that's that's a commitment right there. <laughs> plastic. Actually, a lot of the time when we're doing it on set, I'm using a plastic one. I think you're going to be asked to do that at conventions while you're signing on occasion, right? Just, I would expect that. <laughs> so much double tapping. Br Talking, bring your prop knives. And butterfly knifing. Yeah, yes. Butterfly knife. <laughs> so Rachel, are, are you a collector of anything? I know we talked about your, your trees, but is there anything that you go out of your way to collect? Um, do I collect anything? I, I mean, plants probably like I, it, that's not even a joke. I, I really can't help myself when I go into a plant store or <laughs> buy a plant store and, um, you know, my house in Vancouver, I think I was there nine months and I have so many plants that I had to ask one of my neighbors to go in and water it for me while I was gone, uh, water them all for me, which is <laughs> quite a task. Um, besides that, no, I guess I don't really collect anything in particular. Wait, why have you heard I collect something? Because I asked this question because Paul Amos and Chris Holden read, and I told Chris this story, but sometimes I get asked random questions. And like, I get asked a lot if I play the piccolo or about my book of haikus. So a lot of people started asking me this question. And I was like, where is this coming from? Turns out I did the show Lost Girl with Chris Holden Reed, Paul Amos. They went and changed my Wikipedia page to include that I played the piccolo and <laughs> wrote a book of haikus. And so now I'm so suspicious when people ask me a question. I'm like, they did it again, didn't they? <laughs> like That is so like, funny. Like butterfly carcasses or something. <laughs> did you ever get them back? Okay, so I tried to. I tried to go on Chris's Wikipedia page and change it to like the fact that he'd been in um, like Lord of the Dance or whatever, <laughs> you know, the um, river dance. And uh and I got banned from Wikipedia. So now I can't change anything on Wikipedia. You got banned from Wikipedia? Yeah, and they didn't even change it. I don't know how they got away with like the piccolo. I guess I guess the person, you know, that edits Wikipedia was like, oh yeah, this makes sense. Rachel played the piccolo. But sure. we should add that to your Wikipedia. Rachel Scarzen banned from Wikipedia. 
I mean, I can see that right now. I just, I, I can view it. I just can't edit anything ever. That is so funny. Yeah. We were going to ask about on set pranks, but I think that was the best. So that was a really good one. Paul yes. and Chris are, are master pranksters. Um, I do really love on set pranks. We, on, on Batwoman, um, I really like getting people with the film noir face filter. And so when they're not expecting it, I just <laughs> spelled them with uh, that face filter that makes them into a film noir woman. Um, we also, Cam is a really big uh, jokester. He likes to start all sorts of like games that the whole crew plays. So like, you know, this game where you go like this and you can't look. You just got all of us collectively, so. I know, and actually that's my first win ever. I never win at that game. Um, so I tried to boycott it for at least five episodes. And anyway, needless to say, I was at the in the loser circle for that game. But we also, um, the crew really liked to scare me. So that also started with me being like, oh, I'm gonna scare people unsuccessfully. And uh, then just being scared all the time. So you're, you scare easily then? No, they are talented. Oh. I mean, we were filming at this um, abandoned asylum. And I, you know, it's not that I don't believe in ghosts. I've just never seen a ghost. Maybe they're there. Maybe they're not. Who knows? Um, but everyone was like very like, this place is haunted. I feel like weird. And I was like, I mean, I'm fine, you know. And so then it's late and we're outside. And one of the crew says, oh, my gosh, there's a face there. And I was like. Bro, no. And I look up and I'm like, oh my goodness, I think there's a face there. And I'm looking intently, like, and then I'm calling other people around, like, do you see this face? Like, because it's just kind of like dark shadow. And so then I get one of the crew guys to like bring a flashlight and he's like, I'm like, no, 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 that window there, that window there. And then the flashlight goes to that window and like there's a full face. And I, I don't think I've ever jumped so high or screamed so loud. And it was one, they, they planned the entire thing. And it was one of <laughs> James, this wonderful guy on our crew. It was him and he was up there and they planned this whole thing and they scared the bejesus out of me. Um, and they routinely do it actually. They hide behind trucks and they're really good. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, somebody wants to know, just as a fun question, what's your go-to snack? Ooh, it changes. I, I, uh, I get in like food, um, like I'll kind of get into a food or a snack and then I'm obsessed with it. Right now, I'm obsessed, this is so weird, with frozen peach slices. <laughs> I don't know why. I just became obsessed with them. Um, Alex bought them for his smoothies and one day I was like, ooh, what's this? And I I ate one and I I don't know. I just love them. So I, I I have them in my in my freezer right now too. Ironically, but they're for my sugar gliders. They love frozen peaches. Oh, okay. Well, me and your sugar, <laughs> me and your sugar gliders love frozen peaches. Um, but I went through like coconut chips. I was really into. Oh, I went through a Greek salad phase. I could mm -hmm. not get enough Greek salad. I don't know what it was. I was like eating Greek salad for breakfast. But I'll get into that phase. My mom said I used to do it when I was little too. Like I would only want one thing for lunch and I'd eat the same thing every day for like three months and then I'd never want it again. So we'll see. To stay tuned for my peaches. Stay tuned. Currently, peaches. Currently, peaches. <laughs> so Chris, I know you and I had also um, talked at the beginning of this that we had another photo that we were going to share. Yes. On Rachel's Instagram. If we could bring that up. Pay to please. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> so, so Rachel, tell us about this picture. All right. So, you know, people, a lot of the time, they make a comment about, oh, you have such lovely skin. And, and I do think for the most part, I'm very happy with my skin and I'm, I'm very into like trying different skincare and that kind of thing. But I, I've always struggled with acne sometimes. And I think it's really important nowadays to be real about stuff like that, especially with social media, because there's this pressure. Um, you know, Chris, I was saying this to you uh, in a conversation we had a little while ago, but my friends and I were talking about it recently saying it, it's so, it must be so hard. I mean, it's hard to be an adult woman nowadays, but 
especially um, a younger woman, and I know a lot of the people who follow me are younger women, um, you know, when I was in high school and university, you might compare yourself to the popular girl in school, but now you're comparing yourself to the popular girl in school in Germany who you don't even know on Instagram, you know, and, and it's, it's really tough. And so I got this massive zit on my cheek and I, it was really big. And I just thought, and then I popped it and it was even worse. Um, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to put this on Instagram <laughs> because I want people to know that um, everybody has bad skin days and it, it sort of blew up and everyone really liked the picture. And so then I thought, oh, maybe I'll share the iconic face mask, but maybe I'll share about all the things I'm doing to get rid of this pimple because that pimple really had its moment in the sun. I mean, that pimple squeezed its, what's it, what's it, 15 minutes of fame. Um, it would not go away. It was, it lived hard. Even though I squeezed it, it stuck, stuck around. So I tried all these masks and this was probably um, the most intense mask that I tried. And then actually this mask company was <laughs> lovely enough to send me a bunch of their masks, <laughs> which was really nice um, after this. But well, yeah. thanks to your zit, you got some cool masks out of it. Yeah, and the zit's gone now. I'm happy to report. <laughs> Six <laughs> months later. <laughs> so, so Rachel, switching a little bit, you, um, You've started a convention yourself called HomeCon. Yes, I have. And we'd Following like you to tell our fans about that. I think it's coming up and you can let them know where to find you. <laughs> yes. So we, you know, I was supposed to come to Planet Comic Con. I was so excited about it. Um, and I know that there's lots of other cons. I was going to go to a couple of them. And I was getting a lot of comments uh, about how disappointed people were that those uh, spaces for community were canceled. And so I'd been talking to Paul Amos, who I do home con with, and he'd been doing Zoom chats with fans. And we thought, wouldn't it be really cool if we could get the cast of Lost Girl together and do an Instagram live or do something like that? And it just kind of snowballed. And, you know, we had 35 actors and it was over two days. We did live panels on Twitch. We did one-on-one -on -one calls on Zoom. Um, and it was so much fun. And I think one of the coolest things to come from it, and, and Chris, you're going to experience this uh, with what you're doing now, which I love, um, is that a lot of people have actually never even been to a Comic-Con uh, or couldn't get to a Comic-Con for whatever reason, got to experience that community, which I love. Um, so we're going to do another one. And it's May 16th and 17th. Um, we just announced it today and you can go to homeconofficial.com to sign up for it. Uh, we're actually going to make it free so you can watch the panels for free and we're still going to do the one-on-one -on -one calls. And yeah. So if you just follow us on Instagram or Twitter at homeconofficial, you can get all the information. Can you give us some hints on some of the people to be on there? You mentioned a few the other day, but I don't know if they're public. So yeah. So we're going to have, uh, the cast of Orphan Black, Tatiana Maslany is going to oh, do yeah. it. How cool. Super cool. Yeah. And then uh, we're gonna be announcing it in a couple, like over the next couple of days, the actors uh, that are doing it, but we have uh, Vikings, we have Dragon Ball Z, uh, which is super cool for any anime fan. Um, we have uh, the 100, we have, what else do we have? I should know this, but now my brain is, is pooped. Do you have Chris okay. Zabbitt from Dragon Ball Z? I can't tell you, I can't say, because it, that's <laughs> that we're releasing oh, on Instagram. <laughs> I've been bad. I've been bad. You've been bad. <laughs> I heard nothing, so I don't know. What do you yeah, know? nothing. <laughs> okay. That that's so cool, and there's a lot of people giving you so much love for HomeCon and saying, you know, it was their first convention, and uh, I'm looking forward to. When did you say the 16th and 17th? So that's only a couple weeks away. Yeah, I know. Don't remind me. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's coming up, but like, not too soon. But like, you know, not too far either. Yeah, no, it, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. And we, we had a really, really great time. And it was also just really lovely because we um, donate 10% of everything to first responders first. Most of the actors involved, um, myself included, donated everything that they made to a charity of their choice or to first responders, um, which I loved. And uh, yeah, it was it was just really lovely for all the actors to you know get to see all their castmates, to interact with fans. And I, I think we got some really lovely feedback from it. So 
That's so cool, Rachel. Thank you so much. Like these comments, there is so much love for you, Rachel. And, and it just shows why you're just so sweet. And thank you for taking the time out of your day. I, I know, you know, the world is a crazy place right now, but the fact that you chose to spend this time with us at Planet Comic Con means the world to us. Are you kidding? I have to say Planet Comic Con is easily one of my favorite Comic Cons. I, I make no secret about that. I think they're going to be able to <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> it, no, it really, truly is. Your check's in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I would do anything uh, for Chris. I'm thrilled to be here and it's so lovely to meet you. And I really want to copy your hairdo. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Because Her hair is awesome, isn't it? So she, she is. She is a colorful woman. Kid Kid is a colorful woman. Because I've dyed my hair pink before. Um, I did it a couple months ago, and it fades so fast. So you must have to do it quite often, right? I am incredibly high maintenance. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it looks yeah. good. I love it. Thank you so much. Any uh, final thoughts that you want to leave us with, or anything you want to plug? No, just be kind to each other. Call your mom, call your grandma, call your neighbor. Um, you know, I know this is a, a really difficult time. I talk about this a lot on my Instagram. It's okay to feel scared and, and embrace uh, those feelings of uncertainty and all of those things. But I think, um, you know, just remembering to be in community as much as possible, even if that means virtually is so important. So I'm just so happy that you guys all joined me tonight. I can see some of your comments on the side and thank you for being in community with me tonight. And we will be welcoming Rachel to Planet Comic Con whenever we get back up and running. She's scheduled for August. We'll hope that happens. If it doesn't happen then, we'll work on April. And uh, but but you will be in Kansas City again, Rachel. And I look forward to seeing you again. Wild horses couldn't keep me away. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. I Thank you all for joining us this evening. Much appreciated. And we will be back on Sunday with a stream, a crafter stream with Strange Cat cosplay. Then next Wednesday evening. Uh, we will be having uh, William Bindrup and I for the comic book uh, chat. And then a week from today, Thursday, we will have another celebrity, hopefully, to chat with on uh, Thursday evening for an hour. So thank you all for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All